Hey guys, YouTube, Captain Machine here, back for another video, and today I'm going to be announcing the fact that I've joined a role-playing discussion group on YouTube. I was invited by the um, the Outside 68, so a link in the sub button to the group and also to his channel, so you can get a grasp of the videos he does. Uh, he does a lot of stuff, an absolute lot of stuff. He goes into a lot more detail than I do about my videos, and uh, I'm a bit ashamed by the product he's putting out that I'm not. So uh, I think he's going to be the bar I'm going to measure myself to from now on. But to um, celebrate the fact that I've been, I've joined this group, I'm going to give my first video to the group and to my channel as well, as being a bunch of questions that the Outside 68 asked me a long time ago, back in March in fact, and for one reason or another I never got round to answering them. So these are basically questions that he's asking all GMs at the moment, and I invite anybody out there in Subscribeland who is a GM and has access to a camera or just audio recording equipment to get your answers put up on YouTube, reply to this video, reply to outside the video, and we'll get a discussion going about what makes a good GM. I got into the hobby um, from Milton Bradley. Uh, Milton Bradley, uh, is it Milton Bradley? I think it is. It's a company that produces board games uh, in the UK. I don't know if, I think they operate outside the UK, but I don't know for certain. And they released a little gem called Hero Quest, which was basically, um, invented by some marketing genius in Games Workshop to get new players into the genre. And I absolutely loved it. It was backed up by a fantastic advertising campaign and it was a fantastic, deep and most importantly repeatable board game because you had little mini character sheets, weren't too complex, but you could see progression in your character. And that was a completely new thing. Uh, from there, I went on to reading um, in... Steve Jackson and Linda Stone's Fighting Fantasy books, which again were fantastic. And then finally went on to the Amiga, I played Eye of the Beholder 2, which introduced this whole new game called Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Now, we had been basically ad libbing role playing for quite some time with, like, you know, pretend to be knights and demons and all that malarkey. But this gave us rules and guidelines and stuff we could use. So, um, using the little charts and tables that came in the back of the. Um, manual for uh, either Beholder 2 and then going to the local library and picking up the Dungeon Master's Guide and the Player's Handbook and Unearth Arcana we had a few games of Dungeons and Dragons and it all went from there basically and the first venture I ever wrote was for Advanced Dungeons and Dragons uh, which I've run about, I've run about three or four times now and I intend to at some point update it and um, add it on to some kind of website The thing that motivates me most about um, gaming and the thing that keeps me coming back to is the fact that I have fun doing it. And I have fun with my friends. That's the most important thing. And I do make new friends all the time with it. I mean, I go to role-playing conventions like Furnace and when I can, the UK Game Expo, which I did miss this year. And I meet new people, make new friends, and most importantly, get to experience the games and the, the genre from a different perspective. And that is always enlightening. Uh, I've always found that if you're having fun, there's no reason why you should stop playing. Um, the opposite can be true that people who are not having fun really should stop playing. And there are several situations where I've encountered people that weren't enjoying themselves anymore, but for some reason were carrying on regardless. And that can be more damaging than any good, in my honest opinion. Uh, my GM style varies from game to game. Uh, most of the time I run uh, fantasy stuff like um, Pathfinder or more previous to that Dungeon Dragons. So I was very much a traditional Dungeon Master, I would like to think. Um, I got a couple of little house rules, uh, especially when we use battle mats. Uh, I draw the dungeon on the battle mat and we have, the, we have what's known as Dungeoneering rules, which crept up after a bout of bad gamers. Um, who would go, oh, I'm not in that room, I'm in the other room, when, when a trap would go off or an explosion would happen. So the rule was quite simple that uh, you were where your model was, and if you didn't want your model to be there, you had to pay attention and say, look, I don't want to be there, I'm going to move my model back over here, because that's, that's where I want to be. So, um, uh, I do react to bad habits that people crop up, but I do try to address them with either house rules or little pointers in the right direction, or just simply not rewarding bad play which is a good way of doing it. Um, 
overall, I like I like I like my box text. I like my descriptive text. Um, on the fly, I'm not particularly as good as I like to think I am. So I do pre-write a lot of this stuff, and I tend to um, enjoy the stuff that I write. Um, about the same as stuff that's written, provided it's well written. I've I've played through bad badly written adventures and stuff, and not really enjoyed it at all. So I'm kind of the stereotypical gym. I don't have any particular flair or style that uh, other gyms may or may not have. Well, personally, the hobby has provided me with a whole stable of friends, which I never would have had had it not been for this hobby. Um, the majority of my friends I met playing the games, and then when we stopped playing the games, or we winded it down to like once a week instead of once every other day. Uh, we, we're still friends and we still go out, we still have drinks, we still meet each other, go to restaurants and all that malarkey and by through them I've met their friends and their friends and so on and so forth so for me it's the social aspect of it is incredibly important um, in terms of my own personal life it's given me a YouTube channel, it's given me minor, 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 minor internet celebrity I'm famous on the interwebs for all 300 odd people um, Hopefully going to get up to five subscribers at some point in the very near future and I might have something special planned for when that happens. But for the time being, um, I just simply enjoy um, the friends I've got, who are fantastic people, making new friends and that is the bit that really, how, how that's how the game has impacted me. There are two kinds of gems in the world. Um, and the honest truth is they're either good or bad. That's the distinguishing factor. Um, a good GM, in my opinion, is somebody who prepares, either mentally or um, physically. Uh, a mental GM, someone that's fast on their feet, will have, won't have, will turn up to a game um, half asleep um, or just coming out down from a heavy, long shift that's really, really irritated him or um, something like that because that can really impact on their ability to be creative and if you like me and you don't have the ability to do that you like to write things down and get plenty of notes and stuff like that and the and the more common gem is someone who does prep work and prepares and things like that and basically um someone that doesn't prepare um who, who should because they're not mentally fast enough to be on the fly um they're, they're bad gems in my honest opinion. There is the third category of bad gems which I haven't really covered which is people who would use it as some kind of own personal ego trip because they have acquired through this social means a, a power over another person. And well, I think in the past I may have been guilty of that from time to time but uh, looking back you know you, you can see these sort of things as being negative impacts and um, I've seen friends break up over this and things like that and go because people have literally taken it too far and I've heard stories and we all, we all have heard stories in fact of really bad GMs so we know what makes a bad GM we're quite universally um, agreed on that what makes a good GM is someone who prepares either mentally or physically uh, I would say to any new GMs out there um, the first thing you have to overcome is your embarrassment factor that's the biggest thing that most people have with role playing games and I would say that it's very unlikely that any new gem that we're talking to right now on the interwebs has never role played before I mean there are a couple out there granted um, but the majority of them it's, it's, it's a case of overcoming your embarrassment um, basically you do get a lot of um, introvert, I don't know if that's the correct word players who will just sit in the corner and will not really interact with anyone until something interacts directly with them and if it interacts directly with them for a long period of time it tends to go badly and basically I find that um, those players sometimes get gm and thrust upon them and they don't really real, re deal with it well or they haven't prepared themselves again mentally or physically um, to deal with dungeon mastering so I would say always prepare yourself if you're not someone that's really articulate and really good at describing things on the fly write everything down don't be afraid to run pretty adventures I know they've got some kind of stigma in role playing society but the honest truth is I collect a lot of them I play a lot of them there are bad ones out there but the majority are good to fantastic 
Well, thank you for your time, guys. Goodbye.